Hello, Lockport Township High School District 205 Parents and Guardians. My name is Dr. Bob McBride, Superintendent of Lockport Township High School District 205. This is your board meeting brief for the Board of Education meeting we had right here in the Porter Room on Monday, March 18th. And actually, we did not start in the Porter Room. We started in the East Campus Cafeteria because we had so many students to acknowledge for their athletic accomplishments at the most elite level, the IHSA State Tournament level. We were able to congratulate our girls bowling team, really becoming a dynasty. Almost every year you can expect that they will either be champions or place at the IHSA State Championship. So congratulations girls bowling. Right alongside them, our boys bowling team. These porters also placed, finishing fourth in IHSA competition. So congratulations to them. We also had a historic congratulations. Our girls wrestling team. This is the first year that IHSA had a team competition in state tournament for girls wrestling and the porters finished second in the state. That included two individuals, two young women who were state champions in girls wrestling. So congratulations to Claudia Heaney and congratulations to Morgan Turner. Turner, You are state champions. Finally, a young man who last year placed second in IHSA boys wrestling and did it again this year. So congratulations to Justin Wardlaw. And finally, cheerleading almost becoming a whole other dynasty in and of itself. We had an opportunity to bring the cheer team together, congratulate them for their third place finish in the IHSA State Cheer Tournament. I'd also like to give a shout out this weekend to two of our acapella groups. I'm supporting today Vocal Point. They will be complete competing as well as off the record on Saturday evening in the Great Lakes Regional Tournament. They really advanced out of Illinois as the two best a cappella uh, ensembles in the state of Illinois to that entire Midwest region. Saturday night, March 23rd. Good luck to Vocal Point and off the record. Let's get into the uh, board meeting. And specifically, I'd like to get into my superintendent report, which focused on something very important for your children and students, and that is staffing. The process we go through every single year to take course requests from students, that moment when every single one of our students from eighth grade to juniors sign up for the courses that they want to take the following year. We receive all of those enrollments, almost 27,000 different course requests. And then we have to go through a process of turning those course requests into the amount of staff that we need. That's classroom teachers, school counselors, social workers, psychologists, speech pathologists, and, and more. We briefed the board on the process that we go through and our board has directed us to honor all student requests. What the board would like to see first and foremost is that we look at the requests your students make, we create an appropriate section for each class, we begin the scheduling process and we create the appropriate staff to meet the needs of our students. But cost containment is important. We can't just simply add, 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 add staff without looking at our bottom line. So we brief the board on how we control costs. We meet the needs of your students, the classes they're taking. We're not running through canceling classes, closing classes, limiting enrollments in order to make a financial goal. What we do instead is we use attrition, our retirees, resignations. As more expensive employees leave our system, we hire on less experienced, less costly employees. Now, that doesn't mean second rate. We get high quality new teachers, but we're able to control our staffing costs by thinking very carefully about how much each of those new employees will cost. Over five years, we've added 23 staff members, licensed staff members to serve your children. But we've actually lowered the total costs of our payroll. And at the board meeting, we went through that entire dynamic with our board. Really, it's all about serving your students and the courses that they want to take, but at the same time, being good stewards of your taxpayer money and controlling costs 
because personnel costs are the largest costs that we have operating a school district, a human business. We also spoke to the board at length about the ceiling construction project at Central Campus. Right now, it's a mess. It's a construction site. We have following our WJE Forensic Architects uh, work, their analysis of the building, we have demolished uh, 17 classroom ceilings that had a similar construction method to this, the construction method of room 310, which collapsed on November 1st, and three hallways, three full hallways that had that same plaster ceiling construction. Now, right now, as I speak to you, we've taken just a little bit of a pause to have structural engineers come in and look up into those ceilings and assure us that everything is structurally sound before we hang new ceilings onto those surfaces. Our board approved on Monday night authorization for our architects to do the bid specifications to hire a company to put those new ceilings up so that we can be open in August. I've said to the community, our plan is to be open in August, to bring porters on back to Central. And the only thing that I could tell you as a public right now that could delay that is some unexpected structural engineering report or some unexpected construction glitch that we hit. But the goal is, having our porters back right in Central Campus going to school in their community. Finally, I would like to make a comment on the referendum. It has always been our Board of Education strategy to let you speak first. Uh, we do have a legacy building, Central Campus. As many of you might know, from 2006 to 2011, the way that the district tried to address that was to offer the community new construction, either in full new high school or a building to replace Central. All of those referendum efforts were, were failures. Uh, the voters said no. And again, on March 19th, the idea of an $85 million full renovation uh, uh, of Central, the voters, the voters said no. And uh, our board accepts that result, but also feels that that is rich information because in our society, we let the voters speak. That's one of the best ways for you to express what you want to see happen next. Despite a no vote, I do want to assure you that we're now moving into a planning phase to address the needs at Central. What absolutely has to be done in order to mitigate risk? Obviously, we want to avoid what happened this year where an old system failed, it caused us to close the building, students had to go to a different community to complete their freshman year. We don't want that to happen in the future. And working with the board, we'll do everything within our means um, through the message that you've sent via voting to do exactly that. Uh, we're working on that. We'll be uh, talking more and more about that. Soon, you'll see a survey that will come out to our entire community asking post-referendum whether we won or lost, we would be doing this just what your perceptions and your thoughts are after this whole process is over. So our engagement with you as a community, it, it hasn't ended and we'll be touring Central again as soon as that ceiling construction is finished, bringing you in, taking a look at the building, helping you understand how we're trying to mitigate risk, mitigate any kind of future closure and really make that building as sound as possible in terms of ceiling, windows, electricity, HVAC, Americans with Disability Act, those core things that have to be present for a building to stay open. Thanks so much for listening to this board meeting brief. I hope that you have a wonderful spring break, whether you stay here in the Chicagoland area, Lockport, Homer Glen, uh, Crest Hill, Orland Park, Lamont, Fairmont, or you are traveling and enjoying that, please be safe, be restful, and go Porters.